Hi, I'm Nadira Tudor and welcome to the sessions The Great Data Acceleration. Today's data opportunities are tomorrow's business success. From transformation to acceleration, the events that have unravelled since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic have shown businesses how vital it is to be digital. Critically, a digital business is a data-driven one. Its successes depend on all employees being knowledge workers who can process data and make decisions, enabling the organisation to adapt with pace and intelligence. To empower their employees to do that, business leaders must develop a data strategy that prioritises giving people unobstructed access to data and the tools and competencies to analyse and act on the insights it yields. In this new era of sustainable business transformation, digital transformation is a given. What's needed is digital acceleration with data-driven decision support at its core. Can anyone keep up? Well, today I'm joined by two experts to help explore this. Regina Moran, VP Head of Strategic Programmes and Change at Fujitsu, who has a wealth of experience helping organisations realise their transformation ambition. Welcome. And a special guest from Microsoft, Marcio Goncalves Cesario, General Manager, Business Strategy, Data and AI, Microsoft Corporation, with 21 years experience across all corners of Microsoft. Thanks for joining us today. So, Regina, who can keep up with this race? Hi, Nadira. Well, I think it's true to say that digital leaders have faced immense pressure to ensure that their people, processes, tools and systems are fit for purpose as the workforce shifts to remote and hybrid working. Supply chains are under pressure and products and services needs rapidly evolve. To address these challenges, organisations must show that they will deliver insights from data. When working with data, organizations must understand that it is not the data itself that creates value, it is the knowledge and insight drawn from correctly structured data that can support the more complex decision-making models that have now emerged. We find that there are three clear accelerators that organizations need to focus on. A robust and flexible data strategy, a resilient supply chain for data, and increased investment in data. Some really interesting points there about modern challenges, Regina. Marcia, what are your thoughts on this? Hello, Nadira. Hi, Regina. Thank you for having me. Indeed, to derive insights from all of the data variety, the volume and velocity that we have today, uh, there are some challenges to be uh, um, overtaken. And I would classify these challenges in two areas, technical capabilities and culture. On capabilities, it goes from the ability to unlock the existing data that is there in legacy systems, the ability to modernize the business applications, to analyze the data, to train machine learning models, but more importantly, to be able to do all of that while ensuring that enterprise requirements such as security, privacy of the data, governance are addressed in a simple and in a consistent way across the entire data state. So from the operational databases to your artificial intelligence and analytic systems. On culture, I would say it passes through mindset and skill set, meaning that both the technical and the business uh, teams, uh, that they, they need to be willing to leverage the data, to care about its quality, uh, about making it discoverable, usable by others, right? but also having, of course, the proper training, the proper capabilities to do it. Another valid point there, Marcio. Now, I've got some stats from a recent survey, which I'll uh, read out to you from Fujitsu and Microsoft on senior digital and business leaders around their data transformations, and some are quite astonishing. Um, most businesses understand the importance of data strategy, and 87% researched advised that they abandoned, revised or updating existing data strategies or developed a new data strategy in 2020. Um, it was only actually 2% who had no strategy at all. What are your thoughts on this, Regina? It was remarkable, Nadira, to hear that such a high number had revised their strategy. But I believe, as you mentioned earlier, the context of the pandemic exposed weaknesses in data strategy. As data insights and knowledge being accessible anytime, anywhere became so important. 
our first accelerator is all about having a more robust and flexible data strategy. Many business leaders do not have real-time information that's pulled from multiple sources. We continue to hear calls for more interconnected data sources. Reality is that little is being done to cross leverage information to drive business impact from formal and informal channels. Reducing data silos is going to enable much better value creation and this must be embedded in a successful data strategy. Thank you, Regina. Marcio, what do you think are the most integral elements for a successful data strategy? Uh, good one. So first, let me start uh, just reinforcing the point that uh, uh, Regina mentioned. I do agree that like this percentage of companies abandoning or revising strategy is huge. Uh, but I would say it's not surprising as the topic has, uh, has been in a lot of hype lately. Uh, with companies just uh, embracing the new tech and sometimes downplaying the real challenges that will come down the road. Thinking on this element uh, that uh, you mentioned for this strategy, uh, I would go back to that uh, capabilities and culture uh, frame uh, mentioned before. On the technology side, it's super important to have a future vision. Uh, how you foresee the organization leveraging all of the data state in the future, so what will be the architecture that will need to exist uh, to allow you to manage all this complexity uh, in a way that it is simple, that it is feasible. Like you have real-time data, structured data, unstructured data, like uh, images and videos, uh, data from operational systems, analytics stores, AI machine learning models. Uh, and these are not independent things. So having a clear understanding on how these pieces will be integrated and work together it's super key. On the other hand, on the people side, it may sound cliche to talk about the alignment between IT and business, uh, but I would say it has never been so critical because on one hand, uh, with data, you have the data engineers and the scientists that know all of the technology and that have access to all the data, but won't necessarily address the most impactful use cases without the context on the business challenges and the business opportunities. On the other hand, you have the people in the business that master all the processes, they know the targets, the customer relationships, but many times they will not know that a challenge is even possible to be solved with a new AI technology. So bringing those two words closer is possible and is also key for the data strategy. Have you got anything to add, Regina? Well, I agree totally with you, Marcio. But organizations are still struggling with even the flow of data within their organization. Data accessibility is mission critical, which leads us to our second data accelerator, building a resilient data supply chain. There are some really remarkable stats on this. 46% of digital leaders say their firm failed to meet targets over the last year as a direct result of limited access to data. That's nearly half. Yeah, what's interesting about that is it's the digital leaders, not just the business leaders, cite data access issues. Data drives productivity at all levels within an organization. We also saw that 22% of firms with self-service data access report being much more productive since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, compared just 7% of firms with data silos. Some organizations are really struggling. And what do you think, Marcio? Yeah, I totally agree with you, Regina. Uh, in my view, democratization of data, uh, it's really critical. So, I mean, we need to make it more accessible. You mentioned the self-service access to reports. Uh, that's a good example. Uh, but I would go even beyond that, right? We need to empower every person in the organization with trusted data that will make a difference in their success. Uh, not saying that everyone will become a data scientist, of course, but everyone will need access to the right data. So information workers having the insights and the reports, uh, down to the frontline workers that will have the right indicators, maybe the right guidance in their apps uh, or the machines that they are operating, to even the customers of the company, right? Getting the proper recommendations uh, or uh, suggestions on, on, uh, on, on how to keep uh, on the engagement with the company. And... Uh, that depends on one hand on the right tooling that is intuitive, that is consistent, that can help people to discover and to access this data. 
And on the other hand, depends also on a very solid governance so that we ensure that access only to the people that really need to know that data. So ensuring the privacy of the sensitive information, ensuring the security, the proper uh, access controls and audit. Uh, not coincidentally, all of these are key areas of capability that we invest heavily on. Yeah, I think it's true to say also that, as you mentioned, data use has really accelerated and businesses are depending on their digital teams to keep up. I've heard it said that data is the new oil, but I think that data is more like crude oil, which needs to be refined in order to create insights of value in organizations. This requires investment, which is our third key accelerator, increased investment in data. Future performance depends on investment today. 33% of leaders say that lack of investment in new tools and capabilities for harnessing data remotely will have a negative impact on business performance in the year ahead. So businesses really need to speed up on their data usage and therefore their investment. The research makes that clear. Marcio, if you had the budget that you needed, what would you do with it? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, Nadira, I think uh, I would start like by assembling a diverse cross-functional team to tackle a few fronts in parallel. Uh, one, having that clear vision that I mentioned on the end-to-end -end data state architecture and governance so that we know where we are heading to. Then, in parallel, bring selected business units to be the first partners on this journey. And with these business units, invest on data literacy programs for the business users, uh, but also, and uh, super important, assess and prioritize together the use cases that can have immediate impact. So with that, we can use these use cases to create quick wins and to build momentum um, and use them to build toward that future architecture. Just uh, for example, to make it more practical, some use cases will need access to real-time data information, for example. So you can use that to create these real-time data ingestion capabilities, the systems that will support this for other use cases. Some other use cases will re need like reporting capability. So let's make sure we put in place the right reporting infrastructure. Others will need like artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning models. So it's the time to create the ML ops processes uh, maybe to put in place our responsible AI committee that will discuss uh, the implications of the usage of, of AI. And uh, so you justify the spend with these quick wins, uh, you process the benefits, but while we ensuring that you are building the technology and building the people skills for the future. There's been a lot to take in around the challenges of the great data acceleration, but it's clear that there are three key accelerators that will help organisations use their data to deliver first-class experiences to their customers, citizens and employees. And that's with a more robust and flexible data strategy, a resilient data supply chain and increased investment in data. Regina, how has Fujitsu and Microsoft done this in the past? Well, there are so many examples, Nadira, but I think I'll just pick one, uh, Centrica. Uh, for those of you that may not know, Centrica is a leading energy services and solutions company serving 9 million customers in the UK and Ireland, with employees all over the world, ranging from customer contact centres to energy traders working in financial markets. Our partnership has enhanced global collaboration for their 24,000 employees. They used to be fragmented, but now they have global communities working together and sharing ideas in real time. Users can move between apps and access information almost instantaneously, enabling faster services to their customers, which has directly led to a better customer experience based on a much better employee experience. They've estimated multi-million pound savings in their first year just from this better collaboration. Our secure remote working rollout during the pandemic with Citrix virtual desktop on Microsoft Azure helped Centrica keep the lights on with continued supply to those 9 million customers while moving at the very same time 10,000 employees. The rapid rollout of the remote working capability happened in weeks, not months, which also supported Centrica's commitment to help reduce their carbon emissions by 25% by 2030.
by the end of the decade. Marcio, I'd love to hear your final thoughts on this. Nadira, thank you for the opportunity to have this conversation. Thank you, Regina. It was a pleasure. I think uh, I would leave the audience, uh, in fact, with three questions on a concept uh, called tech intensity that is uh, often referenced by our CEO, Satya Nadella, uh, regarding how to think on technology investments, business performance, and data utilization. And this concept is formed by three pillars. One is technology adoption. The question here is, how do you adopt the latest technologies and is able to integrate them into your organization? The second is uh, technical capability. So how do you build your own unique digital capability? a culture where all people are part of the innovation process and are able to learn, to test, and to act on a hypothesis. And the third, but not least, is trust. So how do you build trust in technology while maintaining a business model alignment? For example, customers are unwilling to trust providers that sell tech on one end while directly competing with them on another. So with our outstanding 40-year history, Fujitsu and Microsoft have developed a trusted partnership where we bring expertise all the way from edge components to network, to the cloud, so all data entry points, ring fenced by a foundation of integrated comprehensive security management to be able to solve really the customer's challenges with the data. So please uh, reach out to us if you're interested in learning more on how we can help you capitalize on this great data acceleration. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marcio. And Regina, your final thoughts, please. Well, really enjoyed the conversation with you, Marcia, and, and thank you, Nadira. I think we have to finish uh, with the customer because that's where we started. And I think it's true to say that customers who have realized the biggest business benefit from their data are the ones who have invested in their people, in their processes, and in their technologies, and are truly integrated. Marcio, Regina, thank you for that brilliant contribution. And that's all we have time for today. Thank you for joining us from myself as well for the great data acceleration, today's data opportunities for tomorrow's business success. Until next time, bye for now.